Ladies and gentlemen, Panax Promotions proudly presents 10 rounds of boxing for the British Masters Super Bantamweight Championship. Sponsored by the Plymouth Evening Herald and Georgia. Timekeeper of the bell is Roger Bowden. Referee in charge of the action from Swindon is Grant Wallace. Introducing to you the challenger. He's fighting out of the red corner wearing the black trunks, trimmed with white, weighing in at 8 stone and 10 pounds, bringing a 24 fight record, 12 wins, 11 losses and 1 draw. He is the official challenger from Sunderland. Please welcome John Barnes. <laughs> and across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the white trunks, trimmed with red and weighed in at 8 stone and 8 pounds. Brings an 11 fight record. Ten wins, five inside the scheduled distance and one defeat. He's the reigning and defending British Masters champion from the Bristol Boys in Bristol, Frankie Del Milo. <laughs> so, sports fans, and Sky fans, let's get the action underway then. Ten rounds of boxing for the British Masters Super Bantamweight Championship. When I say break, I want a good clean break. In the event of a knockdown, boxers stand and go to a neutral corner. Defend yourself at all times. Good luck to both of you. Round one. Chance to see a pretty neat little fighter that you may not have noticed before. Frankie De Milo's been tucked away mainly on the small hall shows. Picking up minor titles such as the Western Area and Strange British Masters Awards. This is 12th outing against the very competent and well-organized win some, lose some John Barnes. Scheduled for 10 rounds in the Super Bantamweight division. Barnes in the black trunks. They both were going to wear white. But he brought a second pair. Sensible young man. This should be a, a decent... Contest Barnes is a very good, hard-working fighter. Been there with some decent guys along the road, and he's not really a, a puncher by any means, but a good, hard worker. He's southpaw De Milo. He has one defeat on his record, and rather a surprising one when he was stopped in two rounds by the Welsh southpaw Jason Thomas. Just got caught. They think pretty highly of him. Bristol. Chris Sanagar looks after him. We'll see a little bit more tonight. Barnes very tough. Decent boxer. Never been stopped. So there should be a pretty long affair unless DeMilo can put his punches together and really test Barnes. But Barnes will be up for this. It's a different sort of chance for him. So he won his last fight against Chris Emmanuel Barnes, so he should be pretty confident. But he's got to really press De Milo, work very hard. He's a very busy fighter, Barnes. It was just a fortnight ago, the victory over Chris Emmanuel, and that's not a bad one. Emmanuel, who really should have beaten Stephen Oates. While back and had a decision over Jim Betts, going through a pretty good spell. So for Barnes to snap that shows he's got talent. Although he has lost 11. Well, the Mario Lord just pouring away, just trying to find the range. Nothing really sharp or snappy as yet. that Barnes has is the lack of power. He's never stopped anybody. So DeMilo might think he can just walk through the Sunderland fighter. Decent combination from Barnes just trying to build up his punches. Oh. To flash out the gut though to end it from DeMilo. Uneventful first round, DeMilo just having a look at Barnes. There he is with Chris Sanagar, the Bristol boys. Sanagar, of course, who has Glenn Caddy. World title shot again. Is the record. 
England defeat to Jason Thomas. Ten victories, most recently in November. Hasn't fought for a while. Boom! They might just need a bit of time to sharpen up a bit. Still picking the better of the punches. Nice long left hand. Boxing out of the, the southpaw stance, leading with the, the right hand. And there was a good right uppercut. So he's just taking his time and picking his shots. Nice. A few nice ones. Here's the second of ten. Eight stone, ten super bantamweight division. And John Barnes on the left of your screen has to take a pound off last night at the weigh in to make that DeMilo came in at 8-8. Eight, eight. Count, I think, to make it to Bantamweight. Somewhere in between the two weights. Frankie DeMilo. Skills, quite fast. You don't really know too much more. Trying to get inside that long southpaw jab that DeMilo is just just talking out, not any power in it, but it's a good range finder. Barnes trying to close down the distance. Good combination from DeMilo. Like there was much power in it. Bit of an arm puncher. Yeah, it's a very long puncher. Not really a snap, he just, just pushes the shots out. He's holding the center of the ring well enough. And using the advantages that he has in height and reach. His bonds has to try and get to him much quicker than he is. He's just staying out of range and this is where the man can just take his shots off. of three or four together. Just a bit slower than De Milo. Exactly pushing him around the ring. And certainly backing Barnes up. He's not letting him get inside. So there, I think he's going to try and start switch tack. He's going to start aiming some shots at the body of DeMilo. This is the straight left from the southpaw stance. The tall, rangy, lanky super bantamweight. Thank you, DeMilo, who's winning this. Not really got out of second gear. Right. John Barnes, okay. Tommy Good right Conroy right with right him. Right there. You must be keep I using them right shot. Right right one just one more. more. So no. He's lost. You all right? Mm. Well, thank you. Not. <laughs> I do. Tommy wasn't looking forward Eleven to the, the journey down here yesterday. Yeah. 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 Long journey there. The pyramid down from Sunderland right. on the train. And inside you, the man, he kind of works inside you, the man who works inside, but get that with the body and keep it with your left and get them straight right in. So catch them with the body and in, in the top of their right hand. Yeah, the the can't work inside. That's obviously the tactic, but he's not letting him get inside. That's right, just pulling him off from long range, and he really needs to get in quicker, boys. Third round, and the supposed defense of the British Masters title that Frankie DeMaio holds, which is a strange one, really. 
sort of top 10, top 15 fighters on small undercard shows. Just a 10 rounder. A chance to see how far Frankie DeMilo can progress. In not the most competitive of divisions. British champion Michael Aldis, who's due to fight Patrick Mullings in a few weeks' time. Chris Senegal was saying they want to let DeMilo off the leash. We need to see a bit more, really. Yes, we do. He's very casual in his approach. He's picking Barnes off from long range. We're not showing a great deal. We're going to see a bit more urgency in the work of Demilio. Yes, he's quick. And there's skills. Switching from body to head. So much power. Five stoppages. last time against Ian Turner in Ever Vale. Using a previous distance victory. Uh, the same fighter. They kept him quiet anyway. It was a Milo till now. Well, Barnes still trying to find a way and the jab ineffective as it often is against the south wall. He needs to step in and do what Tommy Conroy said. He needs to start throwing the right hand a bit more. Well, it just seems to be increasing the pace at last. Barnes, who is not getting inside, as Tommy Conroy was saying in between the rounds. Very difficult. It's the lack of power, isn't it, really? If you have the power to back up that. Well, I think that will always be born. From he hasn't got a, a punch. And you know, he can stay in there, knowledgeable, he can stay in with good fighters, as he has done. People like Dale Robinson and Nicky Coop. But he hasn't got the power to hurt them. So Dale Robinson. Robinson's debut fight in Barnsley back in September of last year. He had a big weight advantage. He gave Robinson a good workout as he does with all of them. John Barnes, black trunks, blue and white boots. So you've got to explain everything to DeMilo. Yes, it does tell uh, the full story. He's not really impressing that much to Milo, but he's just doing enough to win these rounds. This is a definite player at the moment, to say the very least. DeMilo just to... Stop it. 
Fourth fight already of the year. He had 12 last year. Much in demand. Yes, and that's why he's so busy. He's resilient. Will always put up a, a decent fight, but the, the power, your know, the lack of power, is always good. <laughs> but more, don't put that guy in with him. Absolutely. Never stopped anybody. Never been stopped himself, so he'd go rounds with fighters and never been disqualified. The perfect journeyman. More than a journeyman, John Barnes. Still getting through with the, the jab and then that straight left. Left punch. The Milo so far. Just wielding the hooks in as well. That was a good strike there from De Milo. Measuring him with that long jab. Just trying to get Barnes to drop his hands. Maybe as the fight goes on. He was tight at the weight. When he looked like he was going to pick it up and start throwing a lot of punches, just settled down again to Milo. Flashes we're getting of Frankie de Milo. The power in the super phantomweight division. If they could get him safely down to eight stone six, maybe that's an option. However, saying that, he was 8-10 last June against Kevin Gorowski of Nottingham. 9-5 and a half on the night. That's over the super featherweight limit. <laughs> What's Sanagar got to say to De Milo here? To impress. You're stepping forward and then you're hooking. What you've got to do? All right, sir. And then hook. Yeah, because what happens? You, you go in line up and you're going to hit his face. You with me? Whereas if you if you step that way, you miss his head and then you whip him there. You with me? Okay, and then you can bring the left through. Hey? Looking for the hooks yeah, there, good. not the straight left that you were saying. Yeah, job is going to grasp for the language because that's all pretty technical, isn't it? He's in left hand there, but look how many punches are missing. An awful lot from both of these fighters. Second challenge. Round five. Round five here. And the pavilions in Plymouth. The white trunks with Frankie on the waistband. Frankie De Milo from Bristol. Originally from Rwanda, Central Africa. Equator finds himself in Plymouth. Bit of a journey. Boxing Sweden in the amateurs. Professional boxing is banned there, so found his way over to the Chris Sanagar stable. Where he's now settled. Mysterious sort of a life. Should try and pick up the pace a bit more. Well, not really impressing one round very much like the other. And he needs to show a bit more if he's gonna make much of a mark in the division. Yes, very repetitive stuff from to my life. It's effective in that it's winning in the rounds. Trying to just push forward a bit harder now, De Milo. Just to the again and lead right to the body. Not in the head very much. Of trying the hooks that Sanagar was suggesting there. Well, it was a bit better from a, a spell there from De Milo. Just picking the shots more accurately. 
Success, but he needs to do a lot more if he's gonna make any impression on DeMilo. Yes, it's all pretty much the same from Barnes. He throws two or three out of range. DeMilo can counter and keep in control. That's all he's doing, really keeping in control of this. That's right, he's keeping the center of the ring, throwing a few more shots, a little bit more accurate than Barnes. That was a nice left hand there from DeMilo. As occasionally you see quite an impressive shot delivered Stop. from DeMilo. Oh, man. Referee there, Grant Wallace. Having a word with him. What was that about? <laughs> Not really sure. <laughs> Put Mr. Fine there. Strange fight. This, thank you, DeMilo winning it. No question about that. There's the two of them. No corners, punches thrown, but look how many punches landed. <laughs> Success rate to De Milo. Pretty ordinary. Yes, he's not impressing. Occasionally he gets off with some decent shots. He's winning all the rounds. You know, but none, you know, one very much like the other, just doing a bit more than Barnes. He's just in control of De Milo from the center of the ring. Really, one or the other has got to try and live in this contest up. Absolutely. It's a smile there. Those are bringing the first ten seconds. Winning this. Where's the big impact? That's when you let them off the leash. He needs to be doing more than this. Second half. Roger. That is yet to warm up. Some uh, water spilled in the corner. Of the Sunderland team. And the action can continue. But has it really been action? Not really. It's subdued, isn't it? It's not very much like a sparring session in there, and you just want one or the other just to lighten it up a bit. The Milo is the one who wants to impress. But he's just content to. Outbox Barnes, just do a, a bit more than Barnes. Exactly what it's like for a sparring session. So they're not putting that full weight into these punches. What can he do? What can Barnes do there? Well, it's difficult against the, the longer range, you're more skillful to Milo. Barnes really needs to grit his teeth and just start throwing punches. He's got to try and outwork to Milo. Yes, he needs to see punches. That's probably the only chance he's got to Milo, who's been the 10 rounds before. This is Barnes's first fight beyond the six round distance. Oh, good catch up oh, down the straight. There's no signs of him getting to him yet. Tom Barnes having a bit of success there, getting a few of his punches off. Milo can be hit. His defense is not that good. Just springing on his feet, John Barnes, in this round. He's moving around the ring better. Way. That's not really 
wanted. Or any really decent punches. They've all been arm shots. Quick and snappy. Right to the head. Well, it needed to do something because he hasn't done anything in this round to my law. So he's trying to finish it off. But maybe Barnes doing a bit better than this one. Yeah, best round of the fight for John Barnes, and maybe he deserved that one. Now, please, is Tommy Conroy. Yeah, Mike. You can still beat this lad, I'm telling you. If you catch him, I'm telling you, with a couple of combinations. I don't think he's got the biggest bottom in the world, this lad. If you catch him with a couple of them, well, you've got to want this fight, John. No, wait, John, you've got to want it. You can still beat him, he said. John, you've got to whack catch away. Him. Can he beat him? He's got a few rounds, but. Well, very few punches landed. The Milo's. Got the success there, though. Well, Tommy Conroy just wants a bit more commitment and a bit more devil from Barnes. Not very inspired, John Barnes. And you know, there's a, a title, however small it is at stake. Tommy just trying to get him motivated and show a bit more fire. And I think we'll all second that. Absolutely. <laughs> well, here's the seventh round of a very negative affair, I'm afraid. Pretty boring, tedious one for you. Maybe we'll get some excitement over the last four rounds. John Barnes from Sunderland, the 25-year-old in his 25th professional fight. He's won 12 of those, and he's not winning this. Frankie De Milo's 12. He's got 10 victories so far. That's in the lower level. Stop Kevin Gorowski in seven rounds. Fringe British title contender in Ashford, Kent. Barnes has also got a win over Gorowski. He loses in good class, Barnes. And DeMilo may be good class, but how good is he? Well, he needs to show a lot more than he is. If he's going to be one to watch. The uninspired performance from DeMilo. <laughs> Got a few skills and can pick his punches okay. But you know, seems to lack the firepower and the, the real drive to to do anything at a higher level. The firepower and the variation to it. All three seems pretty much of a muchness for De Milo in there. Three's levels at all very much. Could be rusty. He's <laughs> fought for seven months. <laughs> Should ask questions as well for a 27-year-old. The lower weight classes should keep busy. Barnes for a fortnight ago. Barnes always busy, always ready to go and get some work. Some right hand to the body from Barnes, but steps off again. That's why he needs to carry on attacking. Being outworked. Barnes. Not once has Demilo given us any reason for thinking he's a, a puncher. Got anything very different about him. I'm quite disappointed because I've heard good things. Yes, yeah, maybe just a, a poor performance and off night, but certainly there's a lack of snap that you, you see with the, the good fighters. Fergus then. Barnes has been in his career of rounds in a fight normally four and six round level against the slightly better opposition and maybe that's why he's been a bit lukewarm uh, scared about going the, the distance and maybe we'll see a bit more from you know when he gets used to it but this one a mile all round and this is Tommy Conroy only success at the end of the round there for John Barnes, and another one for Frankie De Milo. All looks a bit despondent in there. <laughs> they all look a bit despondent in the whole hall. De Milo, a few better shots, 
bit of variety there, trying to bring the hands down, get some work to the body. But still all a bit quiet. As the whole hall is quiet, it's actually quite full in here. There's it is silent, isn't it? Stephen Rome only at the minute. Corners 10 seconds. Be tough, be strong, and don't let him push you around the wrong way. Step to your right, step to your right, step to the right, step to the right, step to your right, stick the left hand through the middle. Come on. We all are. Nine minutes left. This pretty dreadful super bantamweight fight, to be perfectly frank. John Barnes, well, he needs to do something very, very different. Surely a long way behind on the scorecard of referee Grant Wallace. Frankie DeMilo, yet to impress. We have given everything to DeMilo, bar the sick. Yes, uh, giving him more because he's got a bit more variation, doing a bit more, but he's not impressing. None of these rounds are by a, a great deal. He's just got a little bit more up than Barnes. to get the middle of the ring. Right. Advice from Tommy Conroy earlier to get inside. He worked better there. He hasn't managed to do that, John Barnes. <laughs> well, the fairness, Barnes, you know, he's lost 11 fights. He's the journeyman. Yeah, he'll, he'll be bothered just to get the, the rounds in, get another paid in. Milo, who's the one here? trying to impress, he's trying to make a name for himself, so it's him really that you want to see more from. Okay, Barnes against the prospects like Mark Payne, Nicky Cook, and Jason Dushman, too. He's much better than Demilo, he starts to open up for the first time in the fight, and we saw rapid combinations there. Well, that was something different. It shows a good skill, good variety, nice fast punch picking, and uh, the corner got a little excited there. Finally seeing their man do some work. I'm sure they think he's capable of it. Just showing himself to be a bit lazy in there. It's almost as though he's been sleepwalking through much of this. The dreamland and woke up there. I remember what he was doing. He's backing arms up here very, very well now. Oh, he's been hurt. Something bothered him there. Just put his glove to his face for a second there. Rapid improvement here from Frankie De Milo. Barnes did look worried there. Puts his elbows down. Well, he knows the business, but he's starting to be asked some questions. I wonder if he is tight at the weight, and also he's going longer than he normally goes. And he fought two weeks ago. It's all against him. He's maybe getting a bit hard. He's good to. He'll try hard. John Barnes. This is where you want to see something special from De Milo. And Frankie De Milo after seven one-sided four rounds. Be the first man to stop John Barnes. Well, I would be impressive if he could get the stoppage against Barnes. Stop. Uh, best round of a four fight. He's got to be happier with him in there now. Come on, Mr. Mink, you're looking excited. I spank you. I spank you. I spank you. I'm looking excited. Yeah, that's what he kept saying. You've got to look exciting while he needs to start tap dancing or doing something because he's not looking that exciting boxing. It was a bit better. Started to get some shots off, looking for combinations. But you really wanted to see him carry this on. It's okay, you know, a 10 second burst, but you know, the good fighters can keep the shots going. Uh, the right, the left hand, that just, I think it might just graze the eye of Barnes. I don't think it was particularly hard shot. You see Barnes in a bit of discomfort there. That's just called his right eye. Second the right round nine. The right round the to two. He's even got one of the Ring magazine on his back. I wonder if they sponsor him. 25th fight in a four-year career. 
coming up for four years. Twelve fights last year. Four in 2001. One of the hardest one so far. Breaking a mile over, winning this by a mile. Not over impressing. He's just starting to wear down. Barton, he catches him with a right hook. I wonder if the Sunderland fighter may, for the first time in his career, start the fall. Well, he comes back strongly. Well, you'd think it's going to take a lot more to stop Barnes. Well, he may be just starting to tire in a long journey down. He's obviously had a few problems with the weight. Always out of range, out of luck in this fight. And getting caught more. Barnes, although always still bravely comes forward. Milo just put together his quick hands. Show some speed and panache. Maybe even stop Barnes on his feet. Just through volume of punches. Well, one of the problems with Milo has he misses the chimney. That was good from Barnes there. Trouble for Milo. So woke him up. Great right hand from John Barnes. If he had any power, Milo could have had more problems. Well, look at the stress flashed across the, the face of Demilo. He didn't like that right hand. Maybe left glove on the southpaw stance. Too low from Demilo. Looks for the uppercut. Seems to know all the punches in the book, Demilo, but how well does he throw them? Yes, he throws his punches all one pace, and I think a good, sharp, clean puncher would find Demilo easy to hit. See Michael Brody way above the rest of the pack at the moment, despite being out injured for a few months. But how would DeMilo compare? I don't know, against a Michael Aldis, a Patrick Mullings, a Drew Doherty. They're the people in front of him. He's about fifth in the country, they think. Another decent attack from Bond. Just picking you know, up a bit, getting a few decent punches, and you just sense DeMilo tiring a bit. Yes, it swung a bit. Last couple of rounds. Milo's success in the eighth. Just being bothered by the stubborn resistance of John Barnes. Stop! It's a round for Barnes. Pretty level. And the Milo's got this in the bag, no question about that, barring any absolute disaster. Yes, he has punches landed, tells the, the story of one or two to Milo, 105 to Barnes. Neither one has been that accurate. The Milo caught Barnes with a decent right hand there. Just a loopy hooking shot. And Barnes got one good one in of his own there. That right hand, he just holds his glove up. Reaction across his face there, and Barnes catches him with that good shot. That really was a good one. He needed to step in behind that Barnes. The two corners and the scorecard unofficial from Glenn. Six rounds up to Milo. He's a mile ahead. Second time, set up one more. Centric Frankie De Milo. Getting too much about him, his character, his personality, or how far he can go after this one. Don't know if he's as talented as the Bristol Camp think he is. Probably got to stay on his feet to win though. British Masters title, Super Bantamweight, 10 rounder. Just risk it with him at 27 and move him up in class next. Well, I think they, they've got to, you're wasting your time just hanging about with him. You've got to see what he's made of and, and push him along. Barnes will be pleased to get through 10 rounds for the first time, but I'm sure not. And he looks back at the tape and be 
had an opportunity to shine, it probably was here. Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. Like a power. Like a reach. Like imagination, I suppose. And he's still trying at the end. It's obviously a big step up going from six to ten rounds for Barnes. I think that's probably bothered him a bit. But he's, you know, he's still there, still getting his punches off. A couple of times in the fight where Demarley could have stepped it up. It's possibly in the the first stoppage on John Barnes. It doesn't look like it's going to happen now. He's looking a bit physically weak as the rounds have gone on. I don't think he'll be that strong in Barnes. Another decent little left hook. He may well be caught between weights here, Frankie De Milo. Is he a bantamweight? Is he a super bantamweight? Well, they might just have to put him into the bantamweight division if they can get him down there to see if his punches will have more effect. It seems to me to lack gears. Yes, he does. He's all very much one pierced. Not much idea. He doesn't seem to want to step it up. Bond's doing better in this round, still strong. Milo maybe just thinks he's in the bag and just resting, although he couldn't rest that much more. On paper, we thought this may be a decent fight. I'm afraid it hasn't been. No real excitement at all. Frankie De Milo is still punching his way to decision win here in Plymouth which keeps his career going he hasn't lit up the stage he's had the chance and he hasn't taken it no he's tied in the last round Bond winning this session maybe if Bond had picked up the pace earlier Milo may have tied earlier he thinks it had been over 12 rounds Brock Wallace will go straight to Frankie De Milo I'm sure to put up his hand De Milo looks tired Uninspired fight. He says, I'm the man. Would you agree? Well, not on that evidence. There's an awful lot to do. Doesn't look the, the strongest. I know Barnes doesn't get stopped, and you probably figured that to Milo, but there's a fair way to go with him.